Hello there, welcome to this new video. Yeah, this is probably the first time you've heard my voice. I'm French, so I apologize in advance for the pronunciation. So today we are going to see how to make a brick film. Okay, so just before the video begins, I want to make it clear that I'm not a professional. What you're going to see is simply the sharing of my experience and how I see the brick film. So to make a Lego animation, you must first understand how the video works. And for that, we are going to go back in time. In 1825, the astronomer John Herschel studied the retinal persistence. Retinal persistence is a peculiarity of the functioning of the eye that gives you the illusion of movement when we watch a cartoon, for example. The cells of retina keep an image in memory for about a tenth of a second after its appearance. Thus, if one scrolls very quickly through a second of images, the eye has permanently in memory the images and cannot distinguish two successive images. This is how the eye works. It's essential to understand that to make an animation. John Herschel thus creates from this principle the thermatrop, a playful object. How it works is quite simple. By taking a piece of paper and drawing on both sides of it, it's funny to note that both drawings can work by rotating the paper on itself. It's your eye that plays a trick on you and gives you this illusion. Cinema works the same way. A video is not a capture of reality as one might think. It is a succession of images that gives you the illusion of movement thanks to retinal persistence. A movie usually has a frame rate of 24 frames per second. These are the famous FPS for frame per second. But in video games, for example, it is preferable to have 60 or 140 FPS. It's on this principle that we will create our LEGO animation. To get the impression that your LEGO minifigures are moving, you have to make them move frame after frame. So you take a picture, then you move the figure, then you take a picture, and so on. Then it is after the editing process that your images are arranged one after the other. They are scrolled quickly and that's it. Finally, almost. Doing this is not enough to make your brick film look good. This is what we will see in the next part. To animate, you need a support to turn as well as a decor. Your support must be fixed. If it moves, your image moves, and it won't be very nice to watch. Don't hesitate to spend time building your set. It's really important because it gives you a lot of material to the image and it facilitates the emulsion of the spectator. Of course, if you want to practice the shooting technique, don't spend too much time in the set. But if it's for a final result, invest time. In your set, you must also, and above all, have light. There is nothing more unpleasant than to see a brick film with little light. Use whatever you have on hand, like a desk lamp for example. You can also find cheap lights on the internet. I put links in the video descriptions if you need them. Having lights is good, but exploiting it well is better. If you are a beginner, don't hesitate to do the three-point lighting technique. This is a special arrangement of three limbs. So the first is the key light. It is the one that illuminates your subject the most. The second is the fill light. It's a little less intense and illuminates the second part of the subject to soften the shadows. Finally, the last one is the backlight. It's generally located opposite the fill light and allows you to detach the subject from the background. The first thing I want to tell you is that it's not enough to have a good camera to make a good brick film. Above all, just because you don't have a camera doesn't mean you can't make one. I think you probably have a cell phone at home. That's fine! There are many applications that will allow you to make your animations. I also put a link in the description. Unfortunately, I can't explain how they work, I didn't start the brick film with my phone. If you want to get into stop motion or video in general, turn to DSLRs or hybrids. There are cameras that allow you to get a great depth of field and there for a better background blur. 
Don't hesitate to tell me if you want me to talk more about this point, it will be the subject of a video. Since the beginning, I've been talking to you mainly about the filming technique, because that probably interests you the most. But animation is above all a story. If you have nothing to tell, your viewer will soon get bored. On my last short films, I spent as much time writing the story and making the script as I did shoot. Your script is the most important. If it's not successful, your video will be too. If you want to make your script correctly, I recommend you Celtic Software. Link in the description, of course. Now that you have made your film, you need to edit it. If you're on the phone, the application should allow you to edit easily. If you have a camera, you need to import your photos to your computer. Especially organize them. It's very important. Arrange them by scene or sequence to make it easier for you. Personally, I use a rather particular method. I import my images on DaVinci Resolve, a free software, which automatically creates a sequence for me. All I must do is export and I get a video of my animation. On my usual editing software, I just must adjust the speed of the video so that my animation goes faster or slower. I use Premiere Pro, which is a pet software, but it works just as well on free software. The cool thing about BrickFilm is that the sound is done during editing. So yeah, it's longer to edit since you have to add all the sound effects yourself, but you don't have to invest in audio equipment for the shooting. On the internet, you have access to a lot of free sound effects, I will let you look for them. Of course, if you want to refine your sound as much as possible, paying sites are at your disposal. That's it, I think I've approached the brick film in a general way. If you have any questions or if you would like me to make a video on subjects such as lighting or editing, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments of the video. I don't know if you have seen but I've changed my logo, I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and see you later for more.